Interstellar Comet 3, iAtlas. It was already strange, but now the James Webb Space Telescope has found something new, a light signature that doesn't belong. Astronomers checked for errors, reflections, and natural causes. The unusual glow persists, challenging everything we know about comets. Is this a new kind of natural process? Or does it cross the line into the realm of the truly artificial? The data is in, and the investigation begins now. The James Webb Space Telescope may have recorded light signatures near three eye atlas that don't line up with natural comet behavior. When a telescope like Webb picks up something unexpected, scientists immediately move to rule out errors, reflections, or background sources. But when multiple checks show the signal persists, the data take on added weight. This detection has left astronomers cautious but curious, sparking new investigations into what counts as a truly artificial light signature. Today we'll trace the difference between unusual but natural processes and why some researchers are asking sharper questions here. What makes three I Atlas? Unusual, most interstellar objects get attention simply because they come from beyond our solar system. But 3i Atlas took that curiosity further. The first known visitor of this kind, Oumuamua, sparked debate because it did not behave exactly like a comet or an asteroid. That case set the stage for close monitoring of any newcomers crossing our planetary neighborhood. By the time 3i Atlas appeared, Astronomers were ready to test whether this one fit an expected pattern or carried the same kind of mysteries. What has kept this object in the spotlight is that answers have not lined up neatly with standard models. The name itself tells us part of the story. The 3I designation means it is the third interstellar body confirmed to pass through the solar system. The first, of course, was Oumuamua catalogued as 1i. The second was 2i Borisov, which displayed classic comet-like activity. Then came Atlas, noticed by the asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System survey in 2020. Atlas telescopes are designed to scan for faint moving dots of light that may pose impact risk to Earth, but instead they picked up a body on a hyperbolic orbit. An orbit of that kind means its path is not bound to the sun's gravity. Clear evidence that it originated outside. If Atlas were just another comet, researchers expected to see predictable behaviors. A typical comet warms up as it nears the sun, causing surface ice to sublimate. That outgassing ejects dust, generates a tail, and produces flare-ups in brightness that match its distance from the sun. The light curves, which are graphs of brightness over time, generally rise and fall in this predictable way. Instead, Atlas presented something of a puzzle. Its brightness faded and strengthened in a way that did not match simple solar heating. Some of the biggest curiosities came from changes in its trajectory and its light output, both of which showed inconsistencies. Small deviations in an orbit are common because jets of gas can act like weak thrusters. What stood out here was not the fact of the deviation, but the mismatch between how much light variation was seen and how little change in the path could be explained. This left astronomers with models that only partly accounted for what was being observed. The brightness itself was also unusual. Most comets steadily brighten as they get closer to sunlight. In this case, Atlas displayed intervals of consistent output, not tied to solar distance, followed by unexpected dimming. A working hypothesis is that this could involve unusual composition or fractured structure. Yet the data did not provide an exact match to known behaviors. This difference set Atlas apart from Borisov, which resembled a textbook comet in most respects. That is where the James Webb Space Telescope became important. Ground-based observations only go so far before faint light is lost in atmospheric noise. Webb, 
by operating in infrared wavelengths from space, can detect far weaker signals and split them into spectral lines. Those lines reveal whether the light comes from gases, dust, or reflective surfaces. In the case of ATLAS, Webb allowed astronomers to check whether the signals matched ordinary cometary outgassing, or if they stayed steady in a way more difficult to explain. The challenge has been that some light features remained unusually consistent instead of sporadic. At present, the safest approach is to continue to seek natural explanations, because past anomalies have often turned out that way once more data arrived. Still, ATLAS behaves differently enough that researchers emphasize the need for ongoing study. The key takeaway is that the unusual light curve, together with a path inconsistent with standard activity, justifies deeper investigation. And that leads straight into the pressing question. How do scientists actually decide when a light signature in space crosses the line from natural to potentially artificial? Defining artificial. Light in space. How do scientists even decide whether a glow out in deep space is natural or artificial? The distinction may sound simple, but in astronomy, it is anything but. Artificial light, in this context, means radiation that does not match known physical processes such as heating, reflection, or chemical emission. If a light source behaves in a way that cannot be explained by physics operating on stars, gas, or dust, then it raises the possibility, though only a possibility, that technology may be involved. That threshold is high, and for good reason. Unknown does not equal unnatural, and history shows that many early surprises were later explained by natural causes. A classic case was the discovery of pulsars in the late 1960s. These objects emit very regular radio pulses, so regular that the signal at first looked engineered. The first detection was informally labelled LGM, short for Little Green Men, because it was so unlike any natural process known at the time. The breakthrough came when astronomers realised that pulsars were rapidly spinning neutron stars, dead remnants of massive stars that send out lighthouse-like beams. Once that explanation was found, the signals no longer required speculation about civilizations. This serves as a constant reminder. Apparent anomalies can often be folded back into physics. Once more, data are in hand. The question for 3 I Atlas is whether its observed light signatures can be reconciled with cometary processes. When a comet gets heated by the sun, ice turns into vapor and jets outward. That material reflects sunlight, sometimes glows as it ionizes, and adds complexity to the comet's light curve. Dust grains scatter light differently depending on size, while charged particles in gas tails glow at particular wavelengths. Beyond that, cosmic rays slamming into material can also create brief flashes that might appear to be persistent until measurements are repeated. Each of these mechanisms could, in theory, mimic a glow that at first seems unnatural. This is where Webb provides a critical tool. Unlike ground instruments, Webb can separate light into very fine slices of wavelength, creating a spectrum. Each element and molecule leaves a fingerprint in the form of narrow or broad features across that spectrum. If a glow is just reflected solar radiation bouncing off dust, the spectrum typically resembles that of sunlight. If gas is actively emitting, the spectrum shows sharp emission lines. By resolving those details, Webb helps test whether an apparent steady light is simply the blending of natural processes or something we cannot categorize yet. A way to think of it is like comparing a street lamp on a foggy night with a lightning flash. To the eye from a distance, they can look equally bright. But one is a steady engineered source, and the other is a rapid natural discharge. The key distinction rests on consistency, duration, and spectrum. 
astronomers applied this reasoning to three eye atlas because parts of its output appeared unusually stable, rather than fluctuating with its path around the sun. A working hypothesis has been that such steadiness is not fully explained by typical comet outgassing, even though no claim of artificial cause has been made. The mainstream view remains cautious. The scientific method favours natural explanations first, both because of past experience and because extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Yet the persistence of certain features in the light profile means the debate has not been closed. The data hint at something non-random, enough that researchers have pushed for deeper follow-up observations. Results are still in progress, but that step alone shows the signal cannot be dismissed outright. That leaves open a bigger issue. What else might future telescopes and dedicated missions reveal when more interstellar visitors pass through? Conclusion Signals from three iAtlas continue to challenge how well current models cover interstellar objects. The prevailing view is still that these are natural features of unusual comets. At the same time, certain steady light signatures keep researchers cautious about dismissing alternatives too quickly. This balance between skepticism and curiosity is what drives follow-up work. Each unexplained reading is also a chance to refine methods, test instruments more deeply, and strengthen future surveys. For viewers, the key point is to watch how repeated observations help shape stronger conclusions as new interstellar travellers provide further data for comparison.